Hello. I have the honor of going first. Um, my name's Brett. I'm a designer. Um, and like most of the other designers here, I worked on a few projects during my time at 30 Weeks. Um, but I'm only going to talk to you about one, and, and that's TakeOver. So TakeOver is a social app, but, but not in the way that you'd think about social apps. It's not like a Facebook or a Twitter or an Instagram. It's much more about sharing a moment with somebody. And if you've been following technology in the past you know, a couple of weeks, months or so, you've been hearing a lot about these two apps here, Meerkat and TakeOver. And for those of you who don't know, Meerkat and TakeOver allow for live streaming of any event from anywhere, from anyone, to whoever wants to follow you. And it's in that vein of sharing, that spirit of community that TakeOver really fits in. So TakeOver specifically is an app for taking simultaneous photos from any number of iPhones and then stitching them together automatically in the cloud. But rather than telling you about how cool it is, um, I'm just going to walk you through the demo. So we open up our phone. This is me, pre-haircut. Um, and the home screen allows you to create a takeover. So I can either make this takeover public or private. I can invite my friends. Um, or I can join a takeover by hopping over to the public takeovers. Where right here, I can see all of the currently active live takeovers in my area. Um, and if I don't want to join any of those, I can hop over to my invitations, where I see that Ashley Kay is currently hosting a takeover with five of my friends. So for the sake of a demonstration, I'm going to join that. Um, and I'm immediately dropped into a split screen live video. So Ashley is there directing. She's telling all of the people that are participating in the takeover what to do. So in this case, we're going to take a sweet multi-person selfie. Um, Ashley's going to tap on the little jelly character that we've uh, placed on the right hand side, and it's going to count down from five. And if you guys want to get cheesy, we can all do this together. Okay. All right, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. That's the camera sound. <laughs> um, so magic is happening. And then you get something like this, which is pretty cool. Um, and so TakeOver is very much not about a place to look at content as a, is a place to create content. So we'll post these back onto those social platforms that I mentioned before. So you can share any of these photos to Facebook, Twitter, or, uh, or Instagram, or just save them to your camera roll. And if you're not someone that wants to take a group selfie, you can do something pretty cool like this, where me and a couple of my friends stood on the rooftop of this building and took a 360 degree photograph of uh, the surrounding area on top of Google. So you can think about like cool use cases for this, like 200 different angles of a concert that you're at, or any possible angle of your kid's birthday party. And now that uh, the two engineers that I'm working with, Chris and Olaf, are now raising money to um, expand into live video capture, imagine 200 different angles of a live stream of your favorite concert, directed by your favorite celeb. It's very, very cool and very, very exciting. But not as exciting as the fact that as of today, TakeOver is finally available on the App Store. So I'm just going <laughs> to So I encourage you all to download it. Please go on your phone. There's a, there's a zombie TakeOver app that pops up if you type in TakeOver. So type in TakeOver today, and you'll definitely find it. And speaking of, you can visit our website at takeover.today if you need any more information. Um, thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of the presentations, guys. Hello. Um, my name is Stephen Verity. Uh, before 30 weeks, I was an architect. But today, along with my co-founder, it's a IRL right there, uh, we're building slang. Maybe you've seen a line like this uh, in front of a shop like Supreme or a Foot Locker. These people have been waiting in line for hours, or in some cases, days, for a limited edition sneaker release. The sneakers are in such high demand that they sell out before they ever hit retail stores, retail shelves. Um, uh, so basically what happens is then these sneakers resell in the secondary market for many multiples of their initial resale price. And this has created a booming economy. This year, $1.5 billion will change hands on the secondary sneaker market. And that number is growing 30% year over year. So these aren't just sneaker heads. These are entrepreneurs. These are speculators. They're economists. They're investors. And the problem <coughs> is that this is what their marketplace in their exchange looks like. It's chaos. Buyers and sellers are spread across a number of highly fragmented channels. No centralized place to transact has emerged because none offers a measurably better experience than the others. Then again, none of them leverage the power of mobile commerce. And that's why we built Slang. Slang 
is seeking to become the premier marketplace for this rapidly growing economy by enabling its participants to sell smarter. And by being a mobile product, we're able to provide a peer-to-peer -peer commerce experience that's unparalleled by anything else out there. Let me show you how easy it is to sell on Slime. The first thing you do is take photos of your sneaker. We've already predefined all five images that need to be taken. So you just line it up and move to the next one. It's easy, keeps your listings looking professional, uh, and enables us to do some cool stuff on the tech side. The next thing you do is pick your sneaker. More than likely, it's one of thousands that we already have in our database. Uh, so you find the sneaker you're looking for, you just tap it, and it autofills the rest of the listing. Finally, you set your price. We provide live pricing information for all sneakers in our database. So you choose how much money you want to make, swipe, and upload. You're done. Once you've, created, once you've uploaded your post, we instantly create uh, the social media optimized image that creates a features a unique link to your product. Think of this as like a, uh, a single product pop-up shop in a photo. So that fragmented market I was talking about before, Slang sells across all that. You can create your content on Slang and then sell to your customers wherever they may be. And when customers buy through Slang, it doesn't feel like buying through eBay or another peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. It feels like e-commerce. We provide instant uh, tracking numbers, insured shipping, and a hyper-secure payment system with built-in escrow to provide protection for everyone involved. And we offer this to anyone buying through Slang, no matter what device or operating system they're running on. So by creating a vastly improved user experience, we're making these fundamentally difficult to access products accessible to the people that live for them. We're building the marketplace, we're building a backbone for an emerging economy, and we're putting the ultimate sneaker marketplace in your pocket. Slang is live, we're in private beta, we're generating revenue, but next week we're gonna change the sneaker game forever when we drop it in the app store to thousands of waiting users. We've raised some pre-seed cash. Uh, we're looking to expand the team, we're looking to hire an amazing community manager. We're looking for press surrounding our upcoming launch. And most importantly, we're looking for people selling sneakers. If you have leads on any of that, you can contact me at this email address. Thank you very much. Hey guys, I'm Anna Fine. I went to the School of Visual Arts for Advertising and Graphic Design, and I've spent my professional career working in digital advertising. Um, I'm not going to talk to you guys about one product. Instead, I'm going to talk to you guys about six ideas I had during my time at 30 weeks. Because of the brevity of our time allotted, I'm only going to go through them really quickly. And if you guys want, are interested in seeing more about it, my e email and website is at the bottom of the screen. So my first idea is Sizes. Uh, essentially, it came from the inspiration that <laughs> it's really frustrating how you order something online, and then what you get at your doorstep is completely different. No two sizes are the same. So I thought, why not use your webcam and your measurements and create, a som create something where you can see not only how it looks on your body, but tell you how it fits. So I did that. <laughs> my next idea was Guest Access. It's a privacy app for social situations. So when I hand my phone over to a friend, what they're going to see is on the left. But what I want them to see is on the right. So how do I fix that? My solution was to swipe twice. Instead of uh, logging in with my passcode, I would swipe a second time and put in my guest access code. At which point, the uh, guest will now see a curated list of apps that I have pre-designated. The third idea I worked on was uh, the idea I spent the most amount of time on. It's an inventory tracker. Um, essentially, I, I noticed that a lot of inventory apps um, Excuse me, sorry. I noticed a lot of inventory apps uh, require manual labor. You have to upload individual photos. So I thought, why not do it at the point of purchase? So you register your card, and that every time you buy an item, it goes automatically into your trunks, at which point it is filtered, and anything that needs to be replenished is prioritized to the top. And you can check on mobile and on desktop. My next idea was a motivote. Essentially, it was polling based on how you feel and not what you think. A lot of times, you're going to wa watch something online and you think, uh, well, the video is OK, but there was one part that was really great. So this allows um, users to, or excuse me, hosting sites to track your microfacial expressions and send that data in real time, letting them know what content is exactly making you laugh or making you sad. And of course, some quirky branding. Uh, my next idea was this, I wanted to troll the world. Uh, it's, I called it Whaler. It's a messaging app that you cannot ignore. 
essentially, you record a six second sound bite, send it to a friend, and no matter what they're doing or where they are, they are going to hear it. <laughs> and my last idea is Spotter. It's a luggage tracking service, and it, no matter where you are in your travels, it will let you know where your bag is at all times. This is achieved through an app and an RFID device that's designed neatly to fit into your luggage so, um, in the corners so that you don't lose it among all your stuff. So those are my six ideas. Obviously, they haven't come to fruition. However, I, despite the fact that these reasons are, are why they didn't come to, didn't make it happen, rather, I did learn a lot. Everything you see on the screen are things that I touched during 30 weeks, and everything in bold are things that I didn't even consider until 30 weeks. So I plan on utilizing that education and going forward. This is my contact. This is my email. I am hoping to find an opportunity where I can uh, do innovations, work with a collaborative environment, and um, hopefully a place that loves really good design. So if you guys know of any opportunities, please let me know. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Gustavo, and I'm a multidisciplinary designer from Guatemala. Uh, originally, I'm an architect, but I've been working as a creative director and interaction designer for the past 10 years, and now I'm the founder of Objeto, which is a platform that connects third world makers with first world markets. Um, I come from a country where 60% of the people live under $2 a day. That's extreme poverty. It's living without basic needs like water or electricity. And most of these people, as a means to provide their family with extra income, they make handcrafted products. Uh, so that's where Objeto comes in. We're trying to figure out what happens when you provide these people that are making handcrafted products with uh, the opportunities to improve their lives. Um, and we provide them with the opportunity to tell their story through their craft. So when you come into the platform, uh, we will bring you unique, uh, hand-picked, uh, amazing products from amazing artisans all over the world. Uh, the way we're going to do this is that we're going to launch uh, small limited edition collections that tell the story behind each product. You're going to be able to see who made the product, where they made it, where the materials were sourced from. Um, we're going to upload uh, new collections uh, frequently so the market stays fresh and alive. But more than just a marketplace, we're aiming at being um, a shared brand where we will seek uh, business to business opportunities so that these artisans and designers can, can place their products in other retailers. Uh, a big part of our commitment is to donate 15% um, of the profits that we make uh, for microloans and uh, design sustainability and business workshops so they can turn their their, their business, their craft into an actual business. <coughs> uh, so when you go into the, into the shop, the online shop, you'll be, you'll be able to browse the collections and potentially find the next piece for your home, uh, that it's not only a beautiful product, but it also tells a story behind it. <coughs> um, currently, I'm looking to expand the amount of artisans that have products on the marketplace. I'm looking for press, uh, influencers, bloggers, people to talk about this product, and I'm looking to strike business-to-business -business partnerships. Thank you. All right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Colin. I'm formerly a partner and founder of a design studio in Brooklyn called Work. Uh, I'm now the CEO and founder of Playwell, which is a collaborative space for learning how to make games. I love games. I love to play. I also love the creative power of games. And when I came to 30 Weeks, I started with this project called Microplay. It was really playful. It was very exciting. It was also extremely hard to build. Uh, in fact, a lot harder than I could have ever imagined. And me and my partner realized that maybe we wanted to try something a little bit smaller for our first entry into that space. So we got a small team together, and we worked on this game called Letters. It was also a lot of fun. We got some really great feedback on it. But we hit this wall again where we realized you know, we need more access to better resources. We need to understand how to make a game better. We need to understand the processes and the tools that we need. 
This is actually a really common problem in the game space. There's a lot of independent developers, and this number is growing all the time. A lot of big developers are even moving into independent games, and uh, they tend to work alone. They work in their apartments. Um, they tend to wear every hat that needs to be worn in order to build and launch and sell their game. They also tend to oversimplify the game development process. They think that it's, you know, develop the game, design the game, and, and you push it out, and people will buy it, and you'll make money. The reality is that it's a lot more complicated than that, and it tends to be very non-linear. And inevitably, they miss some of the important elements that they need to have in order to successfully build and launch their game. When you look at other spaces, uh, tech and startups, uh, 30 Weeks is obviously a big example and obviously a big um, inspiration for us. You see that these resources exist like everywhere. It's really easy to find the classes that you need, the, the investors that you need, or, or whatever it is that you want. You essentially can just be a person with an idea and you can take that all the way to, to building something. And so we thought this should really exist for games as well. We need to get people out of their uh, solitary environments. If you want to learn how to make a game today, there's really kind of two places that you go for that. On the one hand, there's the university route, which is really great if you're at that phase in your life where you want to go back to a university. Uh, the other side is self-education. This is also a really good route if you are an awesome person who has the discipline to be able to do this. What we see is a place in the middle, an agile environment where the, where the learning can evolve, where it's supported by collaborators and by, by leaders who can help teach the people who want to learn how to make games and that these courses that we have are really focused and intensive. Everybody who takes the courses, these are some of the, the courses that we've been prototyping, comes out with something that they can use, whether it's a game that they've been working on or whether it's a particular skill that they needed to get better at. It could be on the business side, it could be on the design side. Courses are the pinnacle of what we're doing, but they're just one part of it. We, we are also building into it a strong support structure. I've learned this through my experience. You need to have someone to go up, up to bat for you and, and tell everybody else that you know what you're doing, and that's what we hope mentors can be. Collaboration is really important for us. Events are important for us as well, too. This is an industry that's exploding. Uh, right now, the uh, labor force in games is growing 13 times faster than that of the US labor force. People are flooding into this. And there's a lot of creative people that aren't in games and want to get in, but they don't have a reason to learn how to do it. They don't have something that's easy for them to step into. So we've put together a site. This is kind of where we're at. We've got people coming to it. They're, they're signing up. They're showing that they're interested in it. We're also building a team. We started with uh, adding a, an advisor to our, our team from Prehype, who has a lot of experience and who's been able to kind of guide us through some of the early parts of the process. We've also actually been invited to be a part of the NYU Game Center incubator for the summer, which is a big honor considering we're not one of their students. And this is what our team looks like now, but we're currently looking to expand this. So what we're looking for right now is mainly advisors, teachers, collaborators, mentors that can all help boost what we're trying to do with PlayWell. And we're also really interested in talking to investors who might have relevant experience or want to continue conversations in the future. Thanks. Hi, everyone. My name is Kayla Matthews. Ooh, there I am. Uh, and I came into 30 Weeks as a mechanical engineer and product designer, but now I'm leaving as the founder of Modi. And Modi is a personable new smart object that helps you form any habit you desire. Everyone has habits they want to form, whether it's about exercising more, going to bed earlier, or something as simple as flossing your teeth. Habits are an integral part of our overall health and happiness. However, the problem is how difficult they are to form. If we take a look at New Year's resolutions as an example, each year 80% of Americans who try them fail. It's a little dismal. Uh, the other problem is with our current solutions. So wearables and habit apps are extremely popular these days. Uh, with wearables, over one in 10 Americans currently owns one, and there's over 800 habit-related apps on the App Store today. The problem with these is that data alone is not enough for motivation. <coughs> wearables are quickly left on the shelf, and habit apps are either easily ignored or very quickly get annoying. Instead, Modi is different. So Modi is all about understanding how we as humans connect with technology. What system of rewards and triggers and responses can actually motivate us and engage us in the long term for habit formation, but while still maintaining simplicity and maximizing delight? And this is how we're doing it. We're combining specific insights from the behavioral science of habit formation, as well as from social robotics, so how we emotionally relate to technology, plus the current successes and failures of the quantified self-movement. And what that translates to is this little guy. 
And I'll give you a glimpse at how he works right now. So Modi's first feature is his physicality. He becomes what is known as an environmental cue, meaning one glance at Modi and you're immediately reminded of your habit. And when you do your habit, Modi helps you celebrate your small win through lights, sounds, and haptics. And it's really this immediate and conscious reward that is vital for habit formation. Modi is also smart. He'll always know where you are in your habit progression. And if you're trending <coughs> upwards over time, your, uh, your celebrations through Modi will evolve accordingly. However, if you are straying from your expected behavioral pattern, <laughs> Modi might get sad or he might get upset. Modi also comes with an online user portal. So while Modi will always physically display your progress for the day on his faceplate, uh, you can also go into your more historical data analytics through a browser or app. When we gave Modi to users early on in January, the response was pretty inspiring. Uh, they started calling their prototypes he's and she's, interacting it and describing it more as a friend to stay accountable to rather than just another device. In fact, one of our users became very distressed when we told her we had to take her prototype away at the end, saying that she didn't know if she could keep forming her habit without it. More recently, a couple weeks ago, we launched a public website and had an open call for beta applications. With the help of some press, we were able to get over 2,000 people to sign up for uh, getting the, one of the first 50 betas. And these applicants, they all agreed to a $65 price point, as well as having to tell the story of why they wanted a Modi. Through the ones that I've read so far, it's very clear that a product like this needs to exist. And in order to do so, I'm supported by an amazing team. Together, we cover, cover the gamut of hardware, software, design, business, data science, et cetera. And moving forward, we are currently raising a seed round of 350K, so more than happy to talk to anyone who might be interested in investing at the reception afterwards. Uh, and if you want to join our beta for Modi, unfortunately, we had to close the first round because of oversubscription. However, if you go to modi.io, you can sign up for a mailing list, and you'll be the first to know when we publicly launch. Thank you very much. Hello, uh, my name is Kai. I did product design and development for over 10 years before joining 30 Weeks. Um, I traveled to 20, um, more than 20 countries in the world and always inspired by how food influenced by your uh, local culture in the story of individuals and the backgrounds. And as a matter of fact, most of, most of us think homemade food is better and healthier, but only few of us is eating homemade food regularly. The problem is we think we don't have time to cook, or we don't have access to homemade food for those of us, uh, for those of us don't have the cooking skills. Um, but the fact is, there are people cooking every day in the city from different countries. There's this guy cooking Argentina food, there's this um, lady's uh, woman cooking gluten-free, dairy-free, dessert muffins every, uh, every weekend, um, people cooking traditional Taiwanese food, as well as this Korean mom does Korean cooking for 20 years. What if you can order from them? What if we can order from them? What if we can order from anyone in the city? That's why we create homemade. Um, some people say it's Airbnb for food. We call it a platform that connects you to a nearby home cook. Um, how it works is people will be able to post, um, cook and post their food to the platform for everyone else to discover it and order it through the platform and have homemade delivered to you. You don't have to go into people's house. Don't Nobody have to go to your house for the food. Um, homemade is built by myself and this amazing thing we put together. We know food regulations and safety will need to be handled properly. So we, we brought on a legal advisor just to make sure, just to make sure we design the system properly. Um, we are full speed on launching our website on May. Um, on our homepage, you'll see a feed of home fo uh, homemade food that are made by real people. Um, and on the navigation bar, you, see, you can search food by cuisine, different types and different price. You can also go into the map view and see who's cooking around you. And maybe your neighbor is doing something amazing, you can order from him. Um, for home cook, follow three simple steps and have your food posted on homemade. We also design to allow you to go into people's profile and see their stories and um, uh, ratings and reviews and do have common friends with this person, with this uh, woman, so that you can build trust. Um, we think homemade can create many positive impact from, from both sides of the market. Um, 
we start getting traction from investors as well as local New York City uh, home cooks. And I would like to invite you to join our movement by signing up as, uh, as customers or as home cook or connect us to, to potential investors so that we can all eat better together. Thank you. Uh, he made me a little hungry there. <laughs> There's, is it, does it launch today? Hi. Hello, everyone. My name is Angel Ceballos. Um, I'm a graduate from Parsons, and I have a background in interaction design. And prior to joining 30 Weeks, I was actually designing and building software, uh, enterprise software for architects and engineers. Um, some of my clients include large ar architecture firms, HP and Autodesk, just to name a few. And I took that experience combined with the 30 Weeks program to tackle problems that I myself had and many people around me, which I'm gonna share two projects with you today. So the first one I wanna talk about is Tanto. So Tanto is a project that was tackling the ratings and review system for consumer electronics. So I wanna first tell you a story about Richard. This is Richard, he's like many of us in here when we first wanna find the product. You know, we would talk to our friends, we go online, we end up on a blog, and eventually we end up on a place like this. So this is Richard, he's looking for wireless headphones. There are 900,000 results for him. You know, how does he move forward from this? And if he magically narrows this down, you know, he ends up with a review like this, where everyone hated it and everyone loved the product. You know, is Richard the one in the middle? How does he move forward from this? So this is an interesting opportunity that I saw, that what if we took the questions that Richard and many of us have and combine those with existing reviews or even reviews that people currently have and essentially provide them personalized product recommendations? So these recommendations essentially provide you a nice, easy way to find that product you need at the point of purchase. And this is what Tanto ended up looking like when we ended. So a streamlined experience, not only in finding the content that you needed, rating the product, but also viewing what existing reviews mean uh, for you at the point that you need it without having to read all 7,000 reviews of that product we just saw. So this is one product, we launched it, um, had a landing page. We got traction right away. The first week that it launched at 800 signups, um, and in total right now is 4,000 signups in total for Tanto since the data launched. I took this experience, literally learned by launching, and worked on another project, which uh, I teamed up with Willie, which you'll meet in a second, to work on a project called Little Boards. So Little Boards was an interesting project. Uh, personally, I'm always on forums. I'm a huge gamer myself, just like Colin in here. And the project that Little Boards was trying to tackle was forums. So forums have been around since the dawn of the internet. They haven't changed much in the last 10 or 15 years. They are pretty hard to surface information, and kudos to anyone who ever tried to browse a forum on their phone. So, you know, how do you rethink the entire experience of a forum for a modern era that's mobile first? So this is Little Boards, and this is exactly trying to connect all these forums in an easy way, the intuitive way to actually view them, discover them, and ultimately consume the content. So this is an example of a forum, for example, uh, what it may look like, streamlining the process and how you actually look within it, and also viewing the content within that and switching between every subtopic and threads within them. So we launched the MVP of this product. Uh, we got one of the major game forms to sign up that had 8 million users as our first customer. And we had over 700 signups in the first week. And I'm currently interested in joining an existing startup, uh, taking the experience within 30 weeks and my prior experience working on enterprise software to either create impact or find collaborators to work on the two projects that I just mentioned. And thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Willie. I'm the guy that was in the Modi commercial earlier. And um, I'm also a graduate of the School of Visual Arts. And um, prior to, oh wait, prior to 30 weeks, uh, wait. So I worked in advertising and I'm going from a background where I'm used to selling the product that's already made to actually making a product. And 30 weeks embraces the, this idea of uh, fail fast, which is just keep trying, keep pushing through and try, which actually reminds me a lot of uh, this guy, uh, MJ. So all you guys know him for winning six championships in eight years. But what most, what most people don't realize is how much failure it took him just to win that first championship. So I'd like to share my failures with you guys today. Um, so I came in with the idea of, of just like making things for the sake of making cool things. Like what if a sticker could talk to you? So let's say we put the sticker on an umbrella and it'll remind you to take itself out when you, when you go out so you don't get wet. But what if we can actually use it for something more? like uh, training kids to teach them new habits, uh, putting a jacket on before they go out. So I decided to validate this, this idea 
and I spoke to over 20 parents, and they immediately saw the value in this. So awesome. I was solving a real need. I was solving a real need. And, um, but what I realized was that I was more excited about making an ad campaign for this as opposed to starting a business teaching kids new habits. So I had to move on. So I looked at other problems in my life, such as dating, for example. And when it comes to dating, I usually go to my best friends for advice. But they're not always you know, the best suited for that. So I wanted to see who else would be uh, good at giving advice. So what if the best people are the people outside of your circle? And apparently, a lot of people online felt the same, except they were doing it on forums, which is not made for mobile, mobile phones. So I decided to create Wings. So what you do is you ask a question, and you can upload your text messages. And people could chime in and decipher exactly what each text messages mean <laughs> or on what you could say next. So awesome. I was uh, solving a real need. I was actually passionate about this. And I was going to meetups, going emailing people from General Assembly and other tech meetups and um, to find uh, someone who could actually code this thing. And I actually found someone to be my co-founder. And halfway, he decided to quit. So what did I learn here? I learned that you, it's like dating. You really just can't go out and make anyone your co-founder. Um, so then I looked across my desk, teamed up to an angel, and that's how he came up with Little Boards. And um, we decided to move on to other projects after that. So uh, I didn't end up winning a championship this season, but I'm really looking forward to keep trying and uh, keep pushing forward. So currently, I am looking for opportunities within uh, product design or visual design. Thank you. One second. <laughs> Still going. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Joe Hollier. And when I joined 30 Weeks, I wasn't sure what it was that I wanted to build. But I realized quite quickly that the last thing I thought the world needed was another app. But this concerned me because I was thinking, you know, if how we spend our days is always connected and always staring at screens, what does that mean for the rest of our lives? So I wanted to build something different. I wanted to actually build products that helped people to live in the moment. So I started working on light. And the first product I'd like to introduce is the light phone. The light phone is your phone away from phone. It's essentially a credit card sized cell phone that only makes phone calls. It works with your existing phone, allowing you to comfortably disconnect. So how that goes. You'll turn on call forwarding on an app on your smartphone. You leave your smartphone at home with all of its distractions. You go out with the light phone and enjoy your day, but you'll never miss a call from mom. So basically, the important things forward without any of the distractions. The light phone is thoughtfully simple and designed to be used as little as possible. If we look at this current state of technology and sort of where everything's going, Everything everyone is building is moving towards more connectedness. They're fighting for more of our attention and more of our time. But there's no one building anything to help balance that. We see that as a huge opportunity to be the brand that helps people disconnect, to help people find that balance. That being said, we think you should bring light everywhere. Light was designed to fit invisibly into your life. The battery will last up to 20 days, making an ideal backup to bring with you anywhere. It's uh, really easy to reach those that matter most with speed dials. It's great for any sort of physical activity where you don't want the weight or liability of a bulky smartphone. And it's also a great stepping stone into connectedness for, say, a child's first phone. All of this is great, but I knew I was just a graphic designer and I would need a lot of help to make the phone a reality. So I started by building a team. Kai, my co-founder, comes from a product design and development background and has been making phones for over 10 years. Kai brought along four of his favorite engineers who cover the full spectrum of skills we need to build light. I also enlisted three of my favorite designers to help me with brand, writing, and video production. Together, we make an amazing team, and we're really excited to shake things up. But to bring the light phone to life, uh, we've teamed up with some of the awesome people at Kickstarter, and we're going to be launching a campaign in the next two weeks, which is actually the first day of week 31, if anyone's counting. And uh, in the meantime, I'd love to hear from any of you with questions, support, or feedback you might have. You can email me personally at joe at thelightphone.com, or you can also visit our website to leave us your email or learn more about the phone. Uh, thank you so much, and please don't forget to call your mom.
Hi, everyone. My name is Karen Timmerman. I was born and raised in Mexico, and 10 years ago, I moved to Detroit, where I eventually became a visual designer, and I was also trying to start my own food business. I thought it would be really fun to start my own salsa business, but I never realized that there's nothing fun about keeping an inventory that can expire within one day. So I came to 30 Weeks and I started talking to a lot of people like me that don't have a background in food business or business in general. And we all realized one thing, there is no software out there for food startups. So I, um, so we have hacked together our own solutions with the available technology, but there, we ended up spending more time trying to come up with those solutions than actually making food. So I have created Barrio, a smarter food inventory. Barrio right now is a web app as well as an iOS app that tracks your recipes and ingredients in a mobile, in mobile pantry. Your ingredients are tracked individually so that within the recipes that get sold, you can be uh, notified before you run out of ingredients. So the, po the whole point of Barrio is to keep your pantry fresh. Um, I put together a technical team uh, and we, during the 30 weeks, we did a pre-beta with 10 businesses. Uh, we use that data and we will be releasing a, pre a real beta in the App Store uh, in September. We're doing individual memberships for businesses, but we want to package our technology and implement it in larger food networks. Um, so we want Barrio to be the smarter food inventory for startups. Uh, you can find us at Barrio app on Twitter and Instagram. We're looking for beta users mostly, but also connections uh, with press and also investors, advisors, and anybody that wants to connect and collaborate with us. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dan, and I'm the founder of ANDA, uh, Superior Pollution Mask. It's the evolution of a product that hasn't really changed in hundreds of years. Uh, my own background, uh, I've done a lot of product development work in the consumer electronics industry, uh, medical equipment, and consumer and commercial food equipment. I spent the last 10 years in China doing design and manufacturing. Uh, last year, I moved back to the States. And the big reason was because my kids were sick all the time uh, from the air quality. When we got back to Boston, probably within the first month, they were OK. So that's when I started thinking about you know, what a pollution mask was and what their opportunities were. So when I heard about 30 weeks, I saw it as a really good opportunity to spend the time to be able to focus on this problem. So when I saw this fact um, as part of my research, it got me really motivated to try and find a solution. Earlier this year, uh, I took a trip back to China to really try to understand the attitudes and motivations behind people in China and their attitude towards air pollution. And I found three major trends. The first is that China as a nation wasn't really aware of what air pollution was until only recently, like just the past few years. They thought the haze was fog. Uh, the second is that as Chinese get wealthier, and uh, more stable, they're really looking for a healthier and more fit lifestyle. A lot of people there, they really want to exercise, but they can't because of the air quality. And there's nothing that exists to help serve their needs. Uh, running outside for an hour is the same as walking around for 16 hours. So, Universally, people uh, just really dislike the experience of wearing a mask, so much so that they would prefer to actually breathe polluted air uh, as opposed to protecting themselves. And this is really because products now are really descended from medical and industrial applications and not consumer needs. So it's really a, a lack of design. So with these three trends, I thought there was a really good opportunity to create a product um, that could help people out. <clears throat> so ANDA is looking to design a pollution mask that is, uh, serves these increasingly active and educated uh, user base in China. Uh, we're looking to create a superior experience by letting people live their life without sacrificing uh, comfort or their health. We have a wide range of products, but we're starting with fitness. So we started with a product that didn't use straps because they tend to be painful and difficult to adjust. 
Uh, they're meant to be worn like sunglasses, so you know, easy to take on, easy to take off, and you can fold them up. Uh, we use data from 2,000 scan heads, and that enabled us to create a, a uh, seal that doesn't need any adjustment. So 90% of masks on the market don't seal properly, which mean, makes them ineffective. Um, we're working with a new type of filter that allows 300% more air to pass through, which makes it a lot easier to breathe. Combined with custom fan and vent tech, it's going to allow people to have a mask on and breathe naturally as if they had nothing on. And I'm really looking to kind of change the stigma that people have associated with masks because of the medical applications and try to make something that's more fashionable. So different colors, different patterns, and custom shapes, I think, will let people really express themselves in the way they want to. So I think I really identified a good market and time. But um, with 30 weeks closing out, I still lack two key components. The first is uh, a business collaborator partner with China Experience. And the second is the funding to kind of continue doing what I'm doing. So um, this has been one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. But it's been pretty amazing. So today, I'm actually looking for um, either opportunities to collaborate with others or work with other startups and large companies. So if you'd like to chat, I'm around afterwards. And my email is dan at andamass.com. Thank you. Hey everyone. My name is James. Uh, I'm a student, actually, at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. And I recently took a year off to join 30 weeks, during which I worked on two products. So the first is Smart Fit. Now, fitness is something that's very important to me. And anyone that exercises knows that good form is the difference between seeing like real results or none at all. So this insight led to the creation of Smart Fit, which is smart compression clothing that serves as your personal trainer. So our product coaches you in real time um, your form and how to improve your results and prevent injury. So essentially what we do is we take the technology that's existing in smartphones today, but we're embedding it um, within compression clothing discreetly. That creates a network of sensors to um, analyze the position of the body. So we're currently putting the production of this on hold, but we're looking for um, collaborators, people who have a background in machine learning, to help us when we return to university in the fall. So in the meantime, kind of switching gears, uh, I started to work in a software product, kind of inspired by my own experience moving to New York City. I'm a pretty reasonable guy, I think, and like I think it's kind of unfair that people have to spend 15% of their annual rent or of the annual rent just for having a broker show you their place. So that's why I created PadSwap, which is a platform that connects people who are moving out soon with people looking to rent in an effort to undercut and avoid brokers altogether. So the way this works, you basically post your apartment on this website. You have people over that are interested through the site. And upon signing, you'll get a kickback, about 2% of your annual rent. And there's a service fee that the prospective renter pays. So they avoid the 15%, pay like 4% total. So they're getting a more human, better experience with pre-market apartments. And everyone's happy. So uh, going forward from here, I'm actually going to be working at Google with their advanced technologies and projects group, um, just looking to, again, collaborate with people who have a background in machine learning uh, for going forward. And I love to talk to anyone who's built uh, like a hardware startup in the past. Thanks. Hi. Uh, my name is Ariel. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I was born in New York, but grew up in Tel Aviv, Israel. And I've been an artist and designer basically ever since I can remember myself. I have a background in visual communication, and I was working in branding before starting 30 Weeks. But more importantly, I'd like to talk about five-year-old me. Um, so like I mentioned, my family moved to Israel when I was starting first grade. So basically, I grew up speaking English and Hebrew at the same time. And this girl in the picture here, her name is Dari, and she was my first friend in Israel. And when this picture was taken, I could not speak one word of Hebrew, and she could not speak one word of English. So. Thank God for Barbie dolls. But really through play, we were able to communicate and become friends. And eventually, she had a huge impact on me being able to learn Hebrew. So that got me thinking, how cool would it be if I could create the same experience for children around the world? And maybe they would even grow up being friends like Dari and I. 
So I started looking at children's apps and noticed there's millions and millions of educational apps designed for children. But most of them involve kids sitting in front of screens by themselves and not playing with each other, God forbid, outside. So I decided to bring this up with a bunch of kids. And this is Ido. He's five years old from Tel Aviv, Israel. And I asked him, well, if you could meet kids from around the world, would you want to? And his immediate reaction was, no. So I said, well, why not? And he simply explained to me that he wouldn't understand what they're saying. And that made a lot of sense and is what made me come up with ananas, which means pineapple in essentially every language except English. Um, so ananas is a friendly educational platform which enables children around the world to communicate, teach, and experience each other's language and culture. And the bottom line, it's about kids teaching kids. And here is a quick demo of it. So besides being a fun educational idea, there's a growing market for mobile learning products and services, and it's only expected to increase over the next couple years. We intend on making this into a business by having in-app purchases, parent subscriptions, so parents can see who their kids are playing with and what they're actually learning, and creating a unique database that doesn't exist on any other apps today. Um, but what excites me even more about this idea is that I believe that this can have a real educational impact and reimagine peer-to-peer -peer learning as we know it today. And bigger than that, have a social impact and encourage and increase tolerance empathy, and cross-cultural dialogue, starting with children. In order to achieve this, I'm looking for strategic partnerships uh, involving reach and distribution to get to as many kids around the world as possible, technology partnerships, um, and language learning and game design expertise. Um, and that's it for now. Thank you very much. I'll be here with a demo of the app after, if anyone wants to see. And you can read more on my website, ananasapp.com. Thank you very much.